Hi YouTube, it's Kathy. I'm in my Nibblings Playhouse to do the mid-year book freakout tag. It seems that I always do this tag when I'm not at home. Last year I did it in California for VidCon and now I'm in New Brunswick, which has apparently decided that summer is cancelled because it's been real gross weather the whole time we've been here. Which you would think that would mean there would be no mosquitoes, but I'm convinced they live year-round here, so... That's a thing. Regardless, I just kind of wanted to film something not in my brother's basement, so we're outside in the playhouse that I've been reading in while I've been here. At least when it's not raining. It also might start raining, which would actually be really pretty, so this will be the one time it doesn't rain. There are 15 questions for this tag, and I of course will leave them down below because I'm not a monster, in case you would also like to do this tag. I know many people have already done it, because people tend to do it like two weeks before mid-year, and then I always feel like I'm late even though I'm doing it just after mid-year, so I actually know what I've read for the mid-year. It's fine. If anyone's interested in this statistic, I've read 133 books so far this year. Although, to be fair, two of those were good omens because I read it twice in anticipation for the adaptation release, so there's that. I also wanted to use a different book for every single prompt, otherwise there would definitely be overlap in some of these questions. The first question is the best book you've read so far in 2019, and without a doubt that is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This book is amazing. I cannot wait to get my signed and personalized copy, which I sent to my friend in Florida, thank you Desiree, because shipping it to Canada was going to be more than the cost of the book, and I will be in Florida in September for BookNet Fest, so... Desiree is just getting a bunch of book mail for me that I will pick up in September. I'm sure you've heard about this book before, but on the off chance that you haven't, this is a hate-to-love romance between the first son of the United States and a Prince of Wales. It is delightful, I read an arc for it, I can't wait to get my finished copy just so I can hug it, basically, and then read it again. Also, I have the audiobook on my phone right now from my library, so I will be listening to that very soon. The second question is quite fitting to be the second question, which is what is the best sequel you've read so far this year? Oh good, we'll have bird noises in this one. Which is also fitting because the best sequel I've read so far this year is Song of the Dead by Sarah Glenn Marsh. This is the second in the Reign of the Fallen duology. This duology follows a bisexual necromancer. Need I say more? The third prompt is new releases that you haven't read yet but want to, and for this one I've picked Technically You Started It. This one is by Lana Wood Johnson, and I just heard about this one the other day. Apparently it has demisexual rep, which is all I know, and all I really need to know because I want to read that being a demi person. The fourth prompt is the most anticipated book for the latter half of the year, and I keep telling everyone in my library this title because I think it's hilarious and I'm very excited for the book itself. The full title is Will My Cat Eat My Eyeballs? Big Questions About Death from Tiny Mortals by Caitlin Doughty. If you have never come across Ask a Mortician on YouTube, this is the same person. She's amazing. I've loved both of her other books, and this sounds like it's got a wonderful premise. And I mean that title, though. That title. It comes out in September, and I've already asked my library to purchase it, and I'm already on the holds list to read it. Number five is The Biggest Disappointment, and that was The Dark by David C. Cassidy. This was a horror book I was reading for half a ween. It had some great horror elements, but the writing was very she boobed boobly down the stairs. Every time there was a female character on the page or somebody who might have boobs, it was just talking about their boobs, and I was like, really? I just want the horror elements. I want the creepy things that are happening to this kid. I don't want you to talk about everyone's boobs all the time. Number six is your biggest surprise, and for me that was Jack of Hearts and Other Parts by Elsie Rosen. I don't know why I was so surprised that I loved this as much as I did, because I saw people just screaming about it, but I guess maybe I was in a mood where I figured that things were just being hyped and I was gonna like it, but I wasn't gonna scream about it too, and oh my goodness, this was so good. This book is about a high school student named Jack who starts a sex advice column for his friend's blog, and it kind of blows up, and it is incredibly honest. All of the sex that happens in it happens off page, but it's also just so open and lovely, and then there's this whole mystery element as as well, which I really enjoyed and got kind of scared of at some points. I just think I took myself back to high school and how creepy this would be, and I was just delighted by it. Number seven is favorite new author, and I think I technically started reading this author last year, but I'm gonna do this anyway, because I think at this point I've read all of her books, and I think I five-starred every single one of them, and that's Ashley Herring Blake. Last month I read her two middle grades, before that I've read I think all of her YA novels. They're just amazing. That's a spider. Hi. I just want to sing from the rooftops that if you haven't read this author yet, you should. I think she is my new favorite at this point, as much as one can actually have a favorite, because I cannot have one favorite. That is, that, no, I read too much to have one favorite. Number eight is your new fictional crush, and I don't really get crushes because I'm Demi, but if I had to pick a crush, I'm having a crush on this couple, and their names are Penn and Rosie from This Is How It Always Is. Their relationship is just so open and honest in all of the intimate moments within the book, not just like sexually intimate, but 
intimate uh, emotionally are just so beautifully written and it's just such a wonderful relationship that I just can't help having a crush on both of them. Number nine is your new favorite character and I can't even remember what his name is but it's Daisy and Ellie's father from Prince Charming. He's a British ex-rock and roller who had his 15 minutes of fame back in 1992 and he's a recovering alcoholic but he's just got such a witty charm to him and his daughter also gets some of that charm which makes her a great protagonist. But because I was reading it as an ebook on my phone I was able to screen cap different sections of the book and just laugh about them over Instagram and I just really enjoyed him and I doubt that he'll be in the second book because the second book doesn't follow the same protagonist but maybe he'll be there and I can just giggle at him again, I hope. I just want the series to go on forever, to be honest, because I really, really enjoyed it. Number 10 is a book that made you cry, and for this one, the one that made me cry the most so far this year is Sore Adam Sore, which is a trans memoir written by Adam and his father Rick, mostly by his father Rick because Adam has passed on. I knew going into this that the subject of the memoir was deceased, I didn't know how it happened, and I didn't know that the picture on this cover was actually a selfie taken moments before he died, so I had a lot of feels, just saying. Number 11 is a book that made you happy and that was Bloom by Kevin Panetta. This is an adorable graphic novel about Ari who works for his family's bakery but he wants to go to a bigger city and be in a band with his friends after high school and to do that he needs to replace himself at the bakery so he tries to hire Hector. However he starts falling for Hector and then has to decide whether or not he actually wants to leave. The art style is absolutely beautiful. The only coloring used in this is this beautiful blue coloring and there are so many two-page spreads that are montages of people doing these very simple tasks together that I found very calming unlike all of the bird sounds right now <laughs> mosquitoes 12 is your favorite book to film adaptation that you've watched this year and I've actually only watched one and I've actually seen it before but that was 1408. I read the short story and then I watched the film for half a ween -a I think it's a wonderful adaptation and actually fleshes out the story a little bit. It's pretty high up there when it comes to Stephen King adaptations. Number 13 is your favorite video you've done so far this year and at this point I've made about 80 videos this year so I'm going to name a couple of them. Obviously every week I make a video wrapping up what I've read, watched, and listened to. I also do my monthly wrap-ups and then I also do a lot of TBR videos because I do a lot of readathons. Some favorites that don't fall into those categories, and I'll link them down below, are how libraries can help you do YouTube. There are just so many resources at libraries that not everybody knows about if they're not a regular library user, so I definitely suggest checking that out. I would also be hella remiss if I didn't mention my In Other Lands birthday livestream that I did with Mel from Mel to the Any. We chatted for four hours about this book, but also our lives and everything else, so I had a blast, and I kind of just want to chat with her at all times about all books always. So Mel, if you ever want to do another live stream, let me know. I also really enjoyed doing my Good Omens reaction. I know it's not technically a booktube video, but because it is based on a book and I was reacting to the adaptation, it's still a booktube video, let's be honest. There was also a video I did completely on the fly called How Do You TBR, talking about how people actually keep track of their TBRs and whether or not they follow their TBRs. Because I'm not the type of person that can make a month-long TBR and stick to it because I like mood reading, but I love making TBRs for week-long readathons, so I'm kind of this weird in-the-middle person. And then I use Goodreads for just a long-form TBR of like, remember that this book exists, you might want to pick it up at some point. And then finally, I recently put out the fourth part of my A to Z <sighs> mosquitoes. And finally, I recently put out the fourth part of my A to Z of Queer Lit series, which I will continue adding to every time I have 26 new books to add to another video. Number 14 is the most beautiful book you've bought or received so far this year, and without a doubt, this I have purchased, but my copy is in Florida, and that is Collateral Damage by Taylor Simons. This book just came out on the 25th of June. I read an arc of this and absolutely adored it and had to buy my own copy, and this actually started my trend of buying books for myself and leaving them in Florida, because I will see Taylor in September for Booknet Fest and wanted to make her sign my book anyway, so it just made the most sense to get it shipped to Florida so I could pick it up in Florida and get her to sign it for me. Also, it is my understanding that she will now have a table at Booknet Fest where she will be doing signings, so if you haven't already bought the book, you could buy it there and get her to sign it for you. Also, it's my understanding that there is art throughout this book, so not only is the cover absolutely gorgeous, I'm looking forward to seeing what the art throughout the book looks like. This book is about Meg, who lives in a city that has superheroes, and she detests them. Basically, all of her stuff keeps getting ruined because superheroes create a lot of collateral damage. I love a good superhero movie, I love a good superhero book, 
I love that this was a twist on the genre, and I can't wait to read it again in physical format. The last question is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? And I think I just picked a couple of them because obviously I'm going to read probably a hundred more books this year. For some reason I still haven't read Not Your Backup by C.B. Lee. It just came out last month. I have an arc of it on my phone, haven't gotten to it. It's the third in the Sidekick Squad series and I've been looking forward to it since I finished the second in the series and then extra looking forward to it since I met C.B. Lee last year at Geek Girl Con. I also just got an arc for a book called The Bromance Book Club which is about this guy who's having a failing marriage and he ends up in this book club with other guys who are reading romance novels and basically learning tips on how to please their ladies is how it seems so I'm looking forward to that. And on the recommendation of Mel from Mel to the Any, I picked up a copy of Black Iris and I'm looking forward to getting to that because that was the first time that she saw pan representation and then that's how she came to identify as pan so I want to see that as well. And there you have it, that is the mid-year book freak out tag. I'm never really freaking out because I've always read more than my Goodreads goal at this point in the year. If you haven't already done this tag this year and you would like to do it, you are officially tagged to do so. Have you read any of these books or are you very excited for them? Let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye! Apparently I just needed to film outside and that stops the rain and makes the sunshine come. This is really good. I'm a fan.